Now we go to Ms. Donna Cueto of Net25. Good afternoon, po, ma'am. Hi, and Hi, Donna. Congratulations, po, on your first year in office. And uh, we members of the press are very thankful for this opportunity Hi. that you allowed us to see up close your sincerity and your spirituality. So, uh, in your speech earlier, you've mentioned several reforms that you have already undertaken and are in the process of institutionalizing um, what would be the most vital change so far uh, for you that you have instituted instituted for that I have instituted yes so far among the, the many changes and reforms that you've mentioned okay I think it is, is it is in installing, in instilling rather, a sense of ownership among everyone, starting from my colleagues in the branch, in the in the end bank, where I try to solicit the opinions of even the most junior for major undertakings, and especially during the liberations on adjudication. And uh, even all the way up to the lowest employee, I try to tell them that it is not possible for me to have success of any kind. And I cannot attribute it as my success unless they consider it their personal responsibility and privilege to push for reform and own it. And it is from this sense of pride about doing right, that they will be able to pass on a legacy even to their families. And I think that the employees in the Supreme Court understand this very well. And I think I have even communicated this message to the judges and some of the court employees across the country because some of the judges have been telling me that they have been doubling their efforts because this, they, they believe that we can really prove that we can be a judiciary that people can be proud of. So it is that the change in the talk that has been happening, it is in the availability of a listening ear. I, I would think that as, as an important, as an important Achievement. Thank you. Thank you, Donna. Thank you, ma'am. Next and, question, Donna. And a follow up. Um, you mentioned earlier that you are reaching out to our world, and thank you for that. Uh, the press has been hmm, regarded by judges, by members of the judiciary, with some uh, apprehension, if not uh, fear. We cannot interview them. When I was still covering the justice bit, bit uh, rare are the cases where we can interview judges, uh, much more the justices of the Supreme Court or even the uh, Supreme Court Chief Justice. So thank you for, for this opportunity. And um, you mentioned institutional reforms, uh, systemic problems that uh, are hurdles to what you want to achieve for this uh, the title of your is trial uh, what's this wait I'll check it's a year of trial transition and change so you mentioned this systemic problems and entrenched constraints that you are facing um my question is, how will you uh, solve th those problems? How will you address uh, in a way that you are judicially allowed? Uh, especially those functions which are of uh, a legislative nature. 
Uh, so so there, uh, I, I, I sense that you want to make very great changes for, for the people because you want to help to uplift the human dignity. As you mentioned, you've, you've get, gotten in touch with those prisoners which have, who have been suffering for decades probably in, in our prison system. So how will you address those problems that are tied up with um, other functions, not within your, okay. your bounds? Okay. Thank you. Uh, th th that is a uh, difficult approach, actually, that must always be well calibrated. In the first place, I cannot solve. I cannot solve the problems of the judiciary. We can solve the problems of the judiciary. Our colleagues and the employees of the judiciary can solve it. And as I always say, attributable always to the help of Almighty God. But now, what is the fine line I must thread in order to reach out to the two other branches of government? Remember that I am required to always exercise and be careful about the independence of the judiciary. At the same time, there are legislative proposals that must be put on the table. In my very different conversations with different people, because people have come to me and asked me for ideas for bills that they will be filing in Congress, I have been freely discussing my thoughts. And some have gone to the extent of trying to write down kinds of legislative proposals. So that is one. And of course, the official venue for us to improve our budget situation was the hearing in the Appropriations Committee. And we were able to prove centavo to Centavo, that we really need to have a lot more support. While we need a lot more logistics, a lot more funds to help us build a modern judiciary, what I understand the process requires is that the legislators themselves must believe that it is in the nation's interest to have a very strong judiciary, to sell that idea to them, that it is in everyone's interest to have a strong judiciary, and it is in Congress's interest to provide more funds to the judiciary. And that is why I come, I'm coming before the country, before the public. Be Ayan na po, nakikiusap nga po ako sa ataong bayan na kung ano man pong impluensya ang kaya nyo upang mahubog ang pag-aallocate ng pera sa mga sangay ng gobyerno. Ito pong heodikatura ang totoong nangangailangan ng suporta nyo. Pagkat ang aming kapabilidad po na impluensya at sabihan po ang mga kongresista na kailangan namin ng pera ay may hangganan. Pwede po namin sabihin, pero alam po nilang hindi kami pwedeng mangako ng kahit ano at hindi po namin pwedeng pag-usapan ang mga kasong nasa hudikatura. So nasa sitwasyon po kami na totoong susubukan ang kapabilidad namin at ang determinasyon namin na maging independent sa executive at legis legislative. Sabihin na nga po na susubukan po ang talagang independence namin kasi hindi ho kami talaga naman pong makikipag-usap tungkol sa mga bagay na hinihingi po ng mga, ng mga tao, no? ng mga mambabatas. Hindi ko naman po sinasabing may hihingin sila. No? Ang sinasabi ko po eh, nasa sa loobin po kaya ng mga kababayan natin Nasabihin naman po sa mga kongresista, isama nyo naman po at alalahanin ang hudikatura na wala man lang bahay hustisya ng sarili nila. Maari po bang 
Bigyan niyo po sila ng karagdagang pera para mapapinturahan po at yung mga court records ay magkaro naman ng karampatang storage space. Maari ho kayang magawa ho tayo ng atmosperya sa mga courtrooms natin na pagpasok po ng mga litigants ay magkakaroon sila ng damdamin na mayroon naman po palang dignidad sa lugar na ito. At ang hustisya po ay binibigay sa isang marangal na paraan. Hindi lamang sa salita na ginagamit ng mga huwes na legal pakinggan, kundi pati na po sa physical surroundings ng courthouses. Siguro yun po ang ipinapaabot ko sa inyo. Kaya itong talakayan po ng hudikatura at nating mga miyembro ng media ay isang paraan po upang mapangalagaan ang independensya ng hudikatura sa gitna ng paghingi namin ng karagdagang suporta. Salamat po. Thank you very much po. Thank, Thank you, Donna. You.